Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all that kind of stuff. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It is great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week where I show you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today, I'm actually in Photoshop, which is not something I really ever say because I'm not a Photoshop guy. I rarely use it. And my opinion is it's, it's an incredible tool to be clear, and you can do amazing things with it. I don't really feel like it's um, designed for photographers. Um, having said that, I won't dispute the power and um, a lot of people use it and that's totally cool. I tend to be more of a Luminar guy um, and a number of other plugins I like to use as well. Anyway, about a year ago, Luminar 4, when it launched, had their killer feature, which was AI Sky Replacement, which I still use, still fun, and still super awesome. Last week at Adobe Max, Photoshop announced that they now have AI-based Sky Replacement. Um, because in the past, using Photoshop, you can do all these complex masking, which is super detailed and super accurate and super amazing, to be clear. But it's a fairly involved process, or I should say it was. It isn't any longer. Now it's kind of automatic. So I was kind of thinking, well, what if I took the same photo and the same sky and compared the two? So that's what this video is about. I'm going to put this guy in, um, same sky on the same image, compare it in Luminar and Photoshop and see what the difference is. Also. To be clear, this is not a full tutorial on how do you master that tool in Photoshop. It's fairly straightforward, to be honest. It's also not a video about how do you master that tool in Luminar. I've already done countless videos about sky replacement. So I just want to do a straight up comparison because, hey, I've been doing it in Luminar 4 for over a year. How do I do it in Photoshop? And by the way, is one better than the other? Let's get into it and check it out. Okay, so here I am in Photoshop. I've got an image. I'm going to say edit and sky replacement. And it brings up this box. And by the way, you've got a lot of skies. You can see the sky went in already. You've got skies that are built in. You can also hit plus and go add some skies. And I've got a folder on my desktop um, of some sky packs from Matt Seuss. Matt has an incredible sky pack that I've purchased. I'm an affiliate for it. I'll put a link down below if you want to check it out. It's honestly an amazing sky pack. I'm using this desert sky. I just say open. It was already here because I've been using it. Um, it'll ask you if you want to rename it. I'll say no. And my sky is in, as you can see. Um, that looks really good. You can move this panel around. Um, and if I want to zoom in, I just need to get command and plus. I'm going to zoom in because here's what I want to do. I want to compare things. The trick with photos like this are these edges, right, all around these trees. You can see it did actually a really good job. It's blended that sky quite well. If I turn off the preview, you can see now one thing I noticed, and this isn't just in Photoshop, I see this in Luminar too. And that is, if you look at these trees, um, you know, they're fairly distant in the photo, but some of the edges kind of get what, what I call eaten by the sky. So if I turn this on, you can see some of that tree branch right there is kind of disappearing because the sky is kind of riding over it. That's what I call getting eaten by the sky. So that happens, but to be honest, I mean, if you look at this sky replacement, that looks pretty good. I mean, it, it's it's actually, it's quite good. I need to back out one more time. Um, well, yeah, I'll just, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll zoom back in. Um, I'd rather stay a little bit close. So I think that's done a great job. You've got some controls here. If you need to adjust the edges, you can shift edge and fade edge. And in this case, I don't think I really need to do a whole lot. I think that looks pretty good. You can adjust the brightness and temperature and the scale. You can also flip the sky like that if you need to. These are similar things that you can do in Luminar. I'll get to that in a second. You've also got lighting and color adjustments for the foreground, which come in handy. So in this case, I might say, let me do a color adjustment for the foreground. And as you can see, let me turn off the preview. The color has changed slightly there, which I think comes in really handy. Once you're happy with the sky, you say OK. And down here in your layers panel, this is where the power of Photoshop comes in because you can see it's created a group for your sky replacement with a number of different masks. Again, that's the power of Photoshop. You have all this amazing masking capability that's probably the, the greatest uh, tool uh, or one of the greatest tools in Photoshop and certainly one of the most powerful on the market. But I think it's done an absolutely great job. I'm going to pop over to Luminar and compare the photo. Here we are in Luminar. So I'm just going to say sky selection, load custom sky. I've got Matt's sky, that desert sky photo ready to go. I'm going to say OK. It's going to drop it in and boom. Now here's the thing. I want to zoom in and compare just like I did on the other one and take a look. You can see it didn't really eat uh, the, the branches, but in some cases it doesn't quite blend 
as well as it did in Photoshop. So it's kind of six, six of one, half dozen of the other, as they say. You don't have the, the eating problem in this one, but the blend isn't quite as clear. And over here, of course, you can say closed gaps, sky local, and that starts to take care of that. And again, this is not a full tutorial. I recommend experimenting with these sliders to see how well you can get the photo, I should say the sky to blend. I think that's looking a little bit better. Sometimes when you drag those really far, it does kind of eat into some of those finer details. But the truth is, I mean, I think that looks quite good. Um, and you know, you can flip just like you can in Photoshop. Um, and you've got atmospheric haze, sky temperature, and sky exposure. What you don't have is a true foreground fix like you do in, um, in Photoshop. However, you have relight scene, which actually does that. So it's not really called foreground lighting or foreground color, but when you hit relight scene, it basically does the same thing. So there you go, before and after. I think a fabulous job. In this case, both of them did a really good job. The one thing I notice here, if you look at the water, um, even with my color adjustment that I did slightly here, you can see the water stayed mostly white, whereas over here, it looks like it's picked up some of that foreground color when I hit relight scene. So I'm careful, and I've done this, done this in other videos, I'm careful with the relight scene. I prefer to use other tools, like uh, I would come over here and use adjustable gradient and maybe photo filter or split toning, and then paint some of those adjustments into the foreground with the masking brush to make sure you don't take the white away from the waterfall. That's the first photo. Um, I think they both did a fine job. I'm gonna go back to Photoshop. I'm gonna go to my second photo, and I've got this one. And now, once again, I'm gonna say Edit and Sky Replacement. And in this case, I'm gonna go, uh, I don't want this same sunset. It's defaulting to that. I'm gonna go get, uh, this is another one of Matt's that I loaded. This is a stormy sky. I'm gonna go ahead and load that, and I'm gonna say Flip. And there we go. That photo has now been added, and I wanna zoom in because this is another example of where we're getting a little bit of eating uh, of the sky into these uh, this thin metal rod that's on the top of these uh, this like castle turret thing. So if I turn off preview, you can see that those metal pieces are solid, I guess is the best word for that. And when I click preview, especially in some of these finer areas like those, uh, let me turn that off again. You can see the metal is there, and now it's kind of being eaten. So um, I don't know how to fix that in Photoshop, to be honest. I'm not a Photoshop guy. Can you fix it? I'm sure that you can, but um, I'm not gonna get into that in this video. If you move Shift Edge around, perhaps that will help. If I went to the right, you can see that's actually eaten more of it. Let me zoom back in. Um, that's actually eaten more of it, so maybe you pull Shift Edge down. Um, there you go, but you know, you're losing a little bit of the impact of the sky in the photo in doing so. Fade edge, um, I think helps pretty nicely along the trees, maybe not in this photo, but I've done, I've been playing with this tool for a few days here, just kind of playing around, um, just because I wanted to compare them. So there we go, fade edge, I'm not seeing a big difference, but I think overall, you know, you've, you've got a pretty solid implementation of sky replacement here, uh, and again, once you're happy with it, you just hit OK, and you get access to all the layers and masks, which comes in really handy. Here, I would do a color adjustment to get that foreground to pick up a little bit more of that kind of purple hue. And if I turn off Preview, there it is before, and there it is after. I mean, honestly, I think it's a fine job, to be uh, to be real clear. So I'm going to go get the same photo in Luminar and do a comparison. OK, here we go. So Sky Selection, I'm going to say Load Custom Sky. And this time, I'm going to get Matt's, uh, not the night sky, where is it? There we go. Um, that's that stormy sky from his sky pack. I love the skies. Um, I'm going to say flip just like I did in Photoshop and I want to zoom in just like in Photoshop and give you an idea here again. I'm not seeing the eating of the, uh, of those small details. They look, uh, oops, not flip sky. Um, let me turn this off. So there it is before, and you can see those finer details and that metal scroll work at the top of those towers and after. Something I've, I've noticed in Photoshop, and to be clear, uh, I mean, I guess to be clear about two things, I have a bias toward Luminar. Um, I think that's obvious if you've ever been to my channel, but I don't necessarily have a bias against Photoshop. Photoshop's a great product. It's very powerful. You can do a lot of things with it. I'm just noticing that particular thing occurring in some of the sky replacements that I've done. It doesn't happen in all of them. I'm not saying sky replacement in Photoshop is bad. It's quite good, in fact, um, and I think you know, you can use either tool and probably get great results and be happy with it. 
Um, I just wanted to point out that's something that I've found. There's a sky replacement, and once again, you know, I'd probably do a little bit of relight scene to get a little bit more of that. Um, but as I said in the last photo, I'm careful with the relight scene because I don't want to overdo anything. I tend to make further edits to the foreground using other tools in Luminar. I think, honestly, you would probably do the same in Photoshop Shop. So there it is before and after in the Luminar. And uh, let me turn this off. There it is before and after in Photoshop. So if you just kind of compare the two, Photoshop, Luminar, Photoshop, Luminar. So the other thing you can do in Photoshop, um, in fact, I'll just show you that on the next photo, is you can actually drag the file in the sky and move it around, whereas you can't really do that in Luminar. In Luminar, you can scoot it up and down with the horizontal slider, but you can actually grab the sky and move it around uh, basically like a transform kind of thing in Photoshop. So I'm going to say edit sky replacement and here I'm gonna go back to Matt's desert sky which I love so there it is I'm gonna say that and I'm gonna say okay and there's my sky now you're gonna notice immediately I think it's a little sketchy around the top of the shard it's a little sketchy around this a lamppost and I would say honestly it's super sketchy around these trees and so here's where I would work on shift edge and fade edge so you can see when I hit shift edge it's dragging that sky file better behind the um, behind those trees. But once again, let me zoom in. It's kind of eating some of those branches. So those branches are, are getting eaten basically by that sky. So let me turn this off. Where's preview? There it is. There it is. You can see how um, full, for lack of a better word, the tree branches are. And now they're getting much thinner because um, I've used shift edge so much. So you probably want to pull back but when you pull back getting the sky behind all these branches is difficult to be honest this is a, this is a tough example um and i'll show you luminar in a minute but the point is that's a, a really challenging photo that i don't know that i would say hey let me go replace the sky there um, i personally like the original sky i like that blue hour look anyway but my point is um you would need to mess around with this and you know if you really dug into the tools um, with layers and masking, you could probably go find a way to do that in Photoshop. I'm not the guy. I, number one, I'm not going to teach you that because I don't really use Photoshop. But number two, if I'm going to replace this guy, I'm doing it for artistic purposes and fun purposes. I'm not doing it to make a living at it. That's a long way of saying I don't want to go spend the time and effort to go do that in Photoshop because I don't really care. It's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it quick and easy, which again, that's kind of why I prefer, not kind of, that is why I prefer Luminar because Luminar is going to allow you to just quickly and easily go do that um, without having to master all this masking kind of stuff. You can actually grab this sky file and move it around, as I was saying, which you can't really do in Luminar. So I'm going to say OK and just stick that in there and pretend that we're done with that photo. Now I'm going to go to Luminar and do the same photo with the same sky. OK, here's Luminar and sky selection. I'm going to say load custom sky and I'm going to go get Matt's desert sky again and I'm going to say open and it's going to stick it in there. And honestly, I think it did a really good job. Now here, same as the first photo. It's done, I think, a better job of putting that sky file behind these trees. But if you look closely, um, you've got a little bit of stuff here where it didn't blend so well. So this is, again, playing with close the gaps and sky local. And I think what I ended up doing is kind of going all the way with both of them. And I think it did a pretty good job. It's still a little patchy in some of these areas. If you're really backed out, you may or may not be able to tell. I don't know. I might would just play with this a little bit more. Here's the thing. it's That's a very difficult photo to do. And I don't think either one of them did a perfect job. Luminar did a better job of getting the sky behind some of these tree branches without eating um, up the branches. But it's not perfect. And you still have some splotchy stuff here. Whereas in Photoshop, um, I, I just don't think it did as good a job. And in order to get it really dialed in behind those tree branches you end up eating a bunch of the tree branches so that's a very difficult one and that's why i did it because i'm not trying to say hey luminar is better or photoshop's better um, i have a natural bias to luminar of course but i think this is a very difficult image for that kind of sky replacement and i did it on purpose to show that you know nothing is perfect and everything requires some customization and some work and honestly you may or may not get what you want out of either product depending on the sky for the basic simple stuff, it works. They both work really well. 
Luminar does great. You've seen countless videos, or I've got countless videos. You may not have seen them. Photoshop, I mean, it's Photoshop. You can kind of do anything in Photoshop. Here's, here's my, my judgment, for lack of a better word, my decision. I'm a Luminar person. I, of course, have a bias in that direction. I'm going to keep using Luminar. I think it works a bit more uh, quickly and easily with um, the things that I want to do, which is um, all the basic editing tools. This is a Luminar co uh, comment, not a Luminar Sky replacement comment. But Luminar has all these amazing tools. I prefer to use them. They're quick, easy, and I can more rapidly get to the result that I want in Luminar. So in other words, if you're a Luminar person, I don't necessarily think that there's a reason to go to Photoshop for sky replacement, which you may have had to have done in the past. Conversely, if you're a Photoshop person and you're wondering, hey, now I've got this tool and you were using Luminar just for that tool, you may not need to go to Luminar anymore. You might just say, I can stick in Photoshop. I can do it pretty automatically. And then I've got all the other power of Photoshop. So I kind of feel like Adobe caught up, for lack of a better word, to where Luminar is with sky replacement in a general sense. However, you've probably seen that Luminar, or Skylum, I should say, has now announced that Luminar in version two of this tool, which is gonna be out maybe in the springtime, is gonna have automatic sky um, reflections as well. Because if you get a scene where there's water reflected, you're gonna to need to go and reflect that. So if you're replacing a mountain and there's a lake in front of it, in Luminar, you'd had to go add a new layer with that same image, invert it, mask it in, and in Photoshop, you'd have to do the same thing and still do. Luminar is, uh, you know, in a few months, you're going to have that automatic sky replacement with automatic sky reflection. So that's pretty cool. The bottom line for me is that I'm really happy Adobe has done this because, you know, I love Luminar and I love the Skyloom team. And as I've said repeatedly, I'm biased in that direction and toward that product. But I, I don't want them to stand still. I want them to keep pushing themselves forward and innovating, which obviously they're doing. I love that Adobe has come along and added this feature because that's going to force the Skylum team does not sit on their laurels, and instead they're gonna to have to keep innovating and pushing forward, which is great for us, which is really what it comes down to for me is, you know, I wanna have good editing experience, I wanna have amazing tools, I'm not here to debate, you know, if this is fake or not. You know, we can talk about that, about that in another video perhaps, but the tools are here, they're good in both products, and I think if you use one versus the other more predominantly, stick with it. Um, I think that's the way it's going to work for me. I'm going to stick with Luminar, but I wanted to do a comparison because people are asking me, and I'm genuinely curious. I love to open tools, play with them, and try things out, and um, Photoshop's done a good job. So that's a quickie. That's not a quickie. <laughs> this is probably a 15-minute video, but that's a uh, that's kind of a high-level overview of Luminar Sky Replacement versus Adobe Photoshop Sky Replacement. I hope it gives you some insight into how the tools work and a comparison. And thank you for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I hope you're staying safe. Take care of yourselves. I'll be back soon with more videos. And that's it for now. I'm signing off. Take care, my friends. I'll see you later and adios.